Hello, children. Are you ready for some cutting up and kiki in? Are you ready for a gay old time? Well, I hope you are, because now it's time for Hey Queen with your host, Johnny McGovern. Yay! Hey Queen, come on and spill the tea. Hey Queen, it's just a good old fashioned kiki. Hey Queen, we're cutting up with Johnny. Beautiful gay babies, and welcome to another legendary episode of Wonk Wonk with me, your host, Johnny McGovern. Oh, we have a very special show for you today. Two of my favorite legends are here. It's a legendary edition of Hey Queen. First, we have the glamorous Monique. Wow! 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 <laughs> and the timeless Miss Kitty Meow. Oh! Yeah. Yes, they are here and ready to grace the love seat of glamour with their presence. But before we bring them out, there's another glamour puss on the block stealing your man as we speak. She recently dropped out of the presidential race because y'all can't handle her big caucus. And trust me, she brings more inches than a New York City blizzard. It's Miss Lady Red Couture! Yay! <laughs> Hey, Queen. Hey, Queen. Well. Look at you. And look at you. Well, you know, I'm just trying to represent all of the things great about being American. Yes, you are. It's called mixing cultures. Oh, really? Yes. You're giving me a very black power look today. Well, I'm more like Indo-Negro. Indo-Negro? <laughs> yes. All right. All Indo right, Indonesian mixed with a little Negro. Oh, wait, you got a little something on your forehead. Uh -huh. uh, not exactly a dot, because no. I don't want to be married. That would be inappropriate. Yeah, I don't want to be, I don't want to do all of that, you know what I mean? But I, I, I you know, I practice a little bit. Sure. Mm -hmm. You practice being married to thugs who wander through our house and don't make eye contact when they come in. Well, <laughs> they speak. They speak to Very it. low. What's up, player? What's up? How you doing? What's up? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is like, I feel like the two of us together are like Danny Zico. <laughs> Danny Zico from Greece. <laughs> Meets Pam Greer, 1978. You are very much giving me I mean, a gay grease. This is like act up meets grease. We come Just together like shama lama lama. Sticking my dingy donk. I mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never watched that. Mm -hmm. You never seen grease? No, not all the way through. Well, this is what it's like. Oh. <laughs> There's a lot of white people being happy and oh. shoopy doop doop doop. You're like uh, and you're... raping each other. Oh, and don't forget don't that. Don't forget the don't raping. Don't forget that. Don't but... forget did she put up a fight? Yeah, did she put up a fight? That's an inappropriate question. <laughs> <laughs> she should never put up a fight. If she does, you should let her go. Shame on you, Grease. Uh, well, you know. We come together like gang, 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 gang. Jizzity, jizzity, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be bothered. Inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> there are legends in the house. Uh, but you are, look, I love that. Well, it is very pink. The and then I have my Swish is... Embassy Golden Girl shirt that How says, dare you? Dorothy in the streets, Blanche in the sheets. How dare you mix fuchsia with pink? What you can have, I say? Oh, the set. That. How dare I? The How whole dare set you? is mixing every sparkle pink with a marble pink <laughs> and gold and blue How dare you? and all the rest. I love it. Well, what can you do? I love it. What can you do? You live. I'm living. Yes. You're living. Oh, well, I'm trying. After your trip from Africa where you got that beautiful caftan. Well, you know, I, I, I would love to go to like Nigeria and just visit, but not <laughs> in the ghetto sections. Uh, no, that's not I would just like to idea. go to the good white side, you know, where everyone is South African and we're all sitting together drinking and shit. I would all love that. All the South Africans in Nigeria? They do. <laughs> they go visit. Okay, all right. But you should stay at the resort. <laughs> oh, no, I'll be with the white people. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. I want to get that uh, Negro ish. Oh. <laughs> I want to go kick it with the black folk. I want to kick it with the white no people. No comment on that from the white person. Oh, you can comment. Mm. That's what we got the damn comment thing for. Please <laughs> expound. I'm they're down there. Time. They're right. talking right <laughs> now. How dare she? And, and watch. And they're going to tune into every freaking show we do. We did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, honey, it's a double guest, double legends oh, extravaganza I'm today. I'm so excited. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Glamorous Monique only and here. Kitty Meow, only two here. queens who have been serving it to us for years, darling, with yes. stories to tell yes. and tea to spill. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Oh, 
I'm excited. Me too. I'm excited. We were almost like a like an African tribal, like ooh. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's appropriate. Oh, my goodness. Well, not only is Glamorous Monique here and Kitty Meow here, but of course we have Adam Joseph and the Go to Bed Wing. Yeah! Hey. Adam, come on. Do your white hummingbird thing that you're supposed to do. Give me a little riff. Show me what you got. Hey, 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 hey queen. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes I feel like you're just a little white hummingbird that just came on my finger and sings in my ear. And I say, fly on, keep riffing. This Go back to Rochelle Farrell's house, tweets. wherever you came from. It just came on her finger. Did you hear that? Oh. <laughs> Lady Red. Please. 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 <laughs> this is already a very controversial opening. <laughs> We've attacked Greece. Africa, culture, And I am not finished. <laughs> well, let's get this show started. We got a lot of stuff to cover. Glamorous Monique is here, and Kitty Meow is here. Yay! And we'll be back with them after this very day break. Yeah! Hey everyone, Johnny here to let you know about our brand new website, HeyQueen.tv. Not only do we have every single episode from every season of Hey Queen, but all of our side shows. Hot Tea, Judge Lady Red, He's Fit, Lady Red's Corner, Drag Cousins, Whoa Dude, and more. And most importantly, we have our brand new t-shirt shop with brand new t-shirt designs, including Every Boner is a Blessing. Hey Queen, look at her. Hello, children. Yes, queen. Plus, tank tops for whores for the summertime. And don't forget, wear your Hey Queen shirts with me and Lady Red on them to show your support for everything Hey Queen. Hey queen. Buy them at HeyQueen.tv. guest today is a club legend. She has seen it. She has done it. She has worked the runway of life to the fullest, darling. And she has a lot of tea to spill. You may know her from her amazing video, Punch My Kitty. It's the glamorous Monique. Yeah! yeah. Monique. Yes. Look at her. <laughs> Look at all of us. Yes. Don't stare too hard. You may say some cracks. <laughs> Never, darling. Oh, you are flawless. My Lady Ray, can you believe we got glamorous Monique up in the studio? I feel like it's just such a blessing to be able to be as gay as we want to be and bring the original legend, bitch, the legend. Derek I mean, Lady Robert. Red, do you feel flat-chested today? Because we got 38 triple Fs in the house. It's what? H. Oh, thir oh. Thir 38 triple H? H, just an H. Well, just a 38 H. She gonna hook me up with her doctor, don't trip. <laughs> <laughs> I get my bras at Lane Bryant. <laughs> oh, you do. Uh, <laughs> but nothing else, darling, because your figure is snatched. Oh, thanks. Oh, Monique. Yeah. Now, Monique, we've all just recently seen you on TV. Oh. You were on, you you made an appearance on Botched, though looking at you here, you don't look botched at all. You look well, gorgeous. Well, let me give you the tea on that. Yes. Um, I don't have an agent. I don't have anything like that. You know, people, anything that comes to me just, you know, comes my way. But somebody called me up, a casting agent, asked me who wanted to be on it. So I went down there and they liked me. So they made up any type of surgery. They wanted to do a surgery. I originally wanted to have silicone removed from my breasts and in uh -huh. my legs, and they didn't want to do it, but they liked my personality. So um, they just, they gave me a tummy tuck. They did. They gave me a tummy tuck. I got my 22 inch waist back. Oh, wonderful. But it was only 23 inches, come on. Exactly. That was the most goddamn painful thing I ever had in my life. The tummy tuck was the worst? Oh my God, it was Because that's when they, they slice and they, they pull, slice, right? They, they told me it's like making a bedspread. Wow. Yeah, they pull it up, <laughs> and it makes your pussy in a different position. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It was, ugh. And they put me in a hospital, a, a plastic surgeon hospital uh -huh. in Santa Monica. 
the whole damn floor was full of people that had nothing but plastic surgery. Wow. And it was horrible. It was horrible. I couldn't walk. It hurt more than having my pussy. Oh, my goodness. And that's got to hurt a lot. Yes. It was, it was, it was, it was rough. Oh, Monique. And then a, a thing um, a stitch busted, so they put liquid glue on it. Liquid glue? Liquid glue. Oh. Crazy glue. That's what they do on, on I thought they were supposed to fix people who put liquid glue well, on yeah, it on bonds. They use that. I just cut my eye a couple of weeks oh. ago before I came on here. I leaned down and I hit a cabinet. And they slice it right down. Huh? And they, rather than putting a stitch, they put glue. Oh, wow. Who knew, Monique? You yeah. could have just done all the surgery with some tape and Elmer's glue. What the heck? Plastic rules the world. Plastic yeah. rules the world, darling. And don't you know it? Yeah. Plastic has been tra making you travel around the world for years and years. You've been in the Too sea. Long. Too long, but never long enough, darling. You know, they also gave me a facelift because uh -huh. they said I had... Someone called pixie ears. Uh, and that's when, what, like, oh, when well, I get for a previous, previous facelift. I don't know which one. Oh. A facelift. <laughs> uh, apparently, the ears got caught. I don't know. They pulled too tight. Oh. So they, had, they gave me that, and they pulled my face up at the same time. Wow. Do you know that I went in the next day, and I didn't have one bruise on my face? Wow. So the parting, I do. I thought... It, I heal like a teeny bopper. You sure do. Mm -hmm. Is it you've just you've preserved yourself perfectly? How many surgeries has it been over the years? Mm, I have no idea. No idea. Couple, Countless couple beauty. Hundred. Couple hundred. Well, I'm having lots and lots of lots of reconstructive surgery because I had the liquid silicone injected throughout the body over right. the years, and so I've had some of it go wrong. So. And that's uh, well. Let's get to that in a minute. Let's talk. A, let's just talk a little bit about your <laughs> whole career and your start. I mean, you you were a kid. And where did you grow up? Orange County. Orange County. Fullerton, California, just right. down the road. And you were uh, in a Catholic school? You were a Catholic, Catholic, school, Catholic school boy at the time. Altar boy. Right? Uh, yeah, Orange County altar boy. Went to school. I had my transition at, at 19 years old. Uh -huh. um, my family was very um, supportive. Really? And Yeah, and I went to, to Cal State Fullerton. Got my degree in criminal justice. Yes, you did. And then um, I started to work with the Department of Corrections. So I worked there for 30 years. I know. That's amazing. So you, I remember in reading about you, you said that you, know, you were living life as a boy till you were in about ninth grade. And then you were too feminine for, yeah. for the gender. Yeah, I was. They sent me to a boys' private uh, Catholic school, Servite, in Anaheim, uh -huh. which is a jock school. Wow. So after the ninth grade, I said, no, I can't take it. So they sent me to the first time I'd ever gone to a public school. Uh-huh. You know, where they actually have vending machines. Vending machines. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, and so then through your teenage years, that was sort of the beginning of your transition, but did you, you had your surgery at 19? You no, know, I had it at 21. Okay. At 21, but I started coming up to here in Hollywood. Back in the 70s. I remember all the old clubs. And what was Hollywood in the 70s well, it's totally, like? totally different than it is now. You know, everything was not uh, Boys Town, that area. Everything was more focused down over here in this in Hollywood. In like mid-Hollywood. Yeah, and there was a lot of clubs there long gone, but it was totally different. And that was the disco era? Yeah. Oh my An God. era of excess with cocaine falling from the sky uh, everywhere. Yeah. And uh, superstars were just, I mean, see, I can only imagine. Oh, I saw Rock Hudson, Donna Summer. I used to go to a club in the day with um, Circus, I'm sure. I don't even know if they're around. I think Circus, it's, the building yeah, still exists, right? Yeah, but it's right? totally different. But yeah. It was called Circus Maximus, but there was a famous... Uh, Massage parlor up the street. Uh -huh. So they had to change the name and it became Circus Disco. Wow. And that was probably in 77, 76. Wow. Know. And so you started hanging out at the clubs, hanging around with queens, oh, yeah. developing the look that became your signature glamorous Mooney Club. Yeah, you know, it just came through osmosis, I guess. Right. It came naturally, yeah. And so you were, you were in college and going to the clubs at night? Yeah. And I don't, you know, I look back now and say, how in the hell did I do it? Yeah. And I graduated with honors. You dummy, Monique, you, you kept on, you've kept oh, on youth graduating Oh, youth is beautiful, you know. Give her, give her a round of applause for the beauty. No, youth. <laughs> youth. I've lost all my youth, but yeah. <laughs> But you still got all the beauty. Oh, I just suck up young young boyfriends. I well, that's the way to do it. You have to steal their essence. I got a new one. Oh, you do? Hi there, Garrett. Oh, hi, Garrett. <laughs> oh my God, he's gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how old is Garrett? Eighteen? No, he's an older <laughs> guy. He's thirty-five. Oh well, that's very yeah, well done. Yeah, he's yeah, he has a homeowner and everything else. Well, that's what you need. Better than the last one. The last one robbed me and 
We won't go there. But well, we could go there, though. That's very uh, interesting. No, you could. must have had your share of suitors of every type over all the years. I have. What's your type of guy? <sighs> really? Yeah. I like um, a good masculine guy with a nice body and a nice big old member. Mm-hmm. Don't we all, Lady Rand? I know you do, too. <laughs> well, I mean, if we're going to play uh, Star Wars, we might as well have our lifesavers giving a run for our money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you started to become just sort of a, like a club socialite while at night and then yeah. studying during the day. Exactly. And just, were you just musing around for different people who were inspired no, I, by your beauty? or how, I what just was started that? going out to clubs here in Hollywood and then... Um, when I got my state job, you know, us state workers, we get lots of uh, sick leave and all that, you know, all the benefits. Right. Um, bennies. And um, I just, every time I get a week or two, I go to New York City. Uh -huh. And that's where I met Michael Alec. Right. And Amanda Laporte, Kenny Kenny, all those people at, the, at Limelight. Uh, so tell me about, let take me back to what Limelight was like in that Party Monster era. It was like 1992, I think. Uh -huh. And I first went there and um, I didn't even know what to expect. I just went to the door and Kenny Kenny goes, oh, Michael Alice got to meet you. Michael Alice got to meet you. He let me in. They said, he's up in this room. So I walked into this room. And I go, are you Michael Alec? Are you Michael Alec? Are you Michael Alec? <laughs> and this guy goes, yeah, I'm Michael Alec. And I sat down. He pulled his cock out. Next thing I know, I'm giving him a hand job. What? And he came. <laughs> and it wasn't Michael Alec. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I told Michael the story. Michael enjoyed it. I bet he did. And so you would just go and visit yeah. through that era. When was the first time you met Amanda Lepore? Because you guys are sort of like East Coast, West Coast yeah. legends. I first met uh, good old Amanda back in 92, by 92 at the limelight. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you guys, did you gravitate to each other? Or yeah, were you we, guys like, hmm, who is no, this No, we did, we did. She's, she looked a little different, but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was 92 and, you know, we were both working. Michael said, okay, come on down and we'll give you $100 and we'll give you all the uh, booze and quaaludes, whatever they were doing at the time. <laughs> right. You know, and I met some really fun people, Olympia and... Oh, I don't even know if these people are alive anymore, but yeah. What are some of the wildest memories of that era? Well, I married a German a jeweler, this young guy, and we got married and we flew to um, New York from L.A. And we got to the club and there was a club somewhere in the village so down in Alphabet City, I think that was called. Right. And there was a club, it was an after hours club, and they had like a sandbox area with the club. And Sophia Lamar was there. My oh, good yeah. friend. Oh, Sophia. I love Sophia I Lamar. I love Sophia. And, um, yeah, I just arrived. We got to the club, and Michael popped something in my mouth. Uh-huh. <laughs> Within 15 minutes, I, they, my husband was dragging me, carrying me out of the club. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> out through the sandbox. Out yeah, through the sandbox. <laughs> so you're doing this. You're going to clubs. You're having a nightlife uh, career uh, as, you know, just a, a, be a beauty of the night. And then you're also, during the day, you graduate with your criminal justice degree, and then you start working an eight to five job yes. in the corrections department? The Department of Corrections, paroles. Okay. Parole and community services. I was a correctional case records analyst. Wow. I was a legal custodian of felons' files. <laughs> oh my goodness. I had a brain once. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what was that experience like? Now, you've been, you worked for them for what, 30 years? Yeah, 29. 29 years. Yeah. And so, you would, you would come back from your trips to New York with Michael Alec and Amanda yeah. and all the rest, and then be like, Good morning, Department of Corrections. Yeah. How may I direct you? Case call? records out, may I help you? Right. I had a secretary do that work for Well, me. of course, darling. <laughs> no, really, I did. You know, it was okay, but they did not like me. And I hit a glass ceiling with the, with the department. Because you were transgender. Yes, you know. And your 38 H boobs, yeah, maybe. Something maybe like felt, that. People felt they were, oh, mother, they're so huge and beautiful. But I'm not there anymore. I, you know, I, I got a beautiful pension. You know, and I'm living life now. And then I went right off the first day, I, I, I retired on one day, and the next day I was on a plane to London. Right. Um, in London, they like my songs. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, your songs I, are amazing, especially Punch It! Punch It! Punch That Kitty! Punch My Kitty! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you mentioned London. You've traveled there a lot over the yeah, years. Yeah, I think Pe I was looking at my old passports from 20 years of passports, and I went there 38 
38 times. Wow. 38. Can, can you imagine that? <laughs> what a song. No, really, I was looking at it, and that, my passport had expired, and I, some people want, from Sweden want me to come over to, for something. I just, you know what, traveling is no longer fun. It's a bitch. Well, there's so much security, and they're so always probably security, groping honey, your big boobs. Honey, I, my mouth is dry. And by the time I hit the gate, forget it. You right. Know, you hit like five security points. Uh-huh. And the London to L.A. Uh, route is there. It's really extremely rough. Mm. Well, that's why you need a, you need to fly private, Monique. I know. Anybody got a plane? You got to find a new billionaire boyfriend. Please, any billionaires are all watching. Glamorous Monique is available yeah. for private jet flying. <laughs> Um, when you were in London, you've seen the nightlife there change over the years, and you, you, you've you seen it all. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I first started going there like in 92, and um, yeah, it's really changed. It's, it's, I always wondered why they partied so hard there, but I think it's because the weather's so rotten over there. You know? right. so they got to get fucked yeah, up. Yeah, they go out and get fucked up and go down below and, you know, bury themselves down. And I went to so many clubs, I mean... I can't even remember at this old age, but there were so many great clubs. Oh, my God. Yeah. And you saw you were actually present for the very legendary Lee Bowery show yes. where he gave birth, gave birth to the baby. To the baby. Yeah. Now, what was that? What club was that? And what are the details of that night? Can you, you were, uh, uh, and did you ever meet Lee Bowery? Yes, I met Lee. Um, uh, I can't even remember. There's so right. many clubs over the years. But one of the first clubs I used to go to was Heaven. I don't even know if it's still there. It was like yeah, there's a new version because we uh, just went there, right, Lady Red? Lady Red loves heaven. Do you? Yes. Okay. Nice, <laughs> young, tight. Yeah, uh, a good old heaven. I used to know the guy at the door, and he was really lovely. And but there were so many clubs. I just you you had you had your transition. I mean, many years ago. And what was that? What was that like at the time? Well, I had the master, Doctor Biber. Uh -huh. Good old MASH surgeon from came back from the war, went to work over in uh, Colorado. He could have he could have done this procedure anywhere, but he um, he chose to go back and he was a cattle cattle ranchman. Uh -huh. And he apparently back in 1969, somebody came a social worker said, you know, I need a sex change. Can you do it? Right. He looked. He didn't know what that was. So he wrote John Hopkins. They gave her some. Di they gave him diagrams, and he didn't because if you're willing to, uh, you know, you know, work with me, I'll. I'll do and he did, and so word of mouth spread. And he was doing it two a week for years. Wow. In fact, when I let, when I came there, a girl from Australia was just leaving. Hmm. And that what, was back in '78. '78. So '77. That thought. was a oh. very different time than, than now. And you were working for Department of Corrections. Yeah. So what? Was what was that like? I mean, being you, you're obviously a very beautiful, buxy, buxty woman, and so what was that like being in that office situation, being probably the only transgender person these people had ever oh, met? Oh yeah, you know, I made friends with lots and lots of my coworkers. I, you know, I'm a I'm a people's person. I'm the people's tranny. Uh huh. Yes. No, I, I really got to know people, and you know, but it's always the upper echelon. They they had a problem with me. Mm -hmm. You know, because all I wanted to do before I retired is become a parole services agent, which is an entry-level parole agent, you know, because it, you get better benefits and it's peace officer status, except you don't carry a gun. Right. And so that's what I wanted, and I interviewed nine or ten times over the years, and I didn't get that position. And I, I got to the point, and I spoke to the people on the interviewing panel. They always said I was number one. You know, I have a gift of gab. Yes, you I'm do. A, I'm a Gemini. And uh, I didn't get it, so I one day I said, fuck you, I got my time, and I got my A, fuck you, and I left. And you flew off to, now you could take your nightlife yeah. life to the daytime. And things have just come to me, you know, I don't, I stay home, I have a lovely condo in, in Orange County, La Harbor, California. Mm. <laughs> Shout out La Harbor. Yes, and I mean, shake They call it, it uh, water La Harbor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I met a record producer, Gordy Cox, and uh, he helped work with me. And we did uh, 38 Triple F, Punch My Kitty, and People's Tranny. And that was the beginning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, it's been a very big year for transgender issues, women. Yes. Especially, I mean, you're known as the People's Tranny, but that word has become taboo. What, what bring it feelings? on, honey. Bring it on. Yes. 
No, it doesn't bother me. You know, I, things are moving so fast. My God, in my day, they, they call it transsexual. Now they're calling it T and this and that. I, I can't keep up. Mm -hmm. And can't. what do you think about the opposing viewpoints where some people don't like the word tranny to be used? I understand, but you, you know, for me, I have enough self-confidence to know who and what I am. And I don't care. Right. I don't care, you know. Come pick it, okay? I don't really care. Bring it on. <laughs> shake your bust if you yeah, must. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you must, shake the bust. <laughs> oh, I was a Vegas showgirl on the straight at the Folie Bergere when I was 21 years old. You were? Mm. Now, tell me that story. Mm, they had a casting call on the old Rick D show. Uh-huh. And they... They asked for girls that were uh, five ten to six foot to come on out and try for a showgirl, and I did it and I won, and I became Miss LA and we had a pageant in Vegas at the Tropicana, and this was so long ago, you know, that nobody talked about. It. There was another T girl and girl she did not even look at me. Right. <laughs> but you know, I understand it was the time. You know, I know I became self obsessed and I became a. Um, a surgery junkie at one point in my life. Yeah. And I'm, I'm paying the price for that. But, um, well, let's get into that for a second. Mm -hmm. Tell me about, I mean, Monique, you're making faces, but I mean, this was in the Daily Mail with all the pictures. Daily, yeah. <laughs> I mean, tell me about that when that surgery, uh, that surgery obsession started. Probably when I was hanging out with a girl named Silka, if any of you old folks remember her. Uh, she was like the first, um, T-girl porn star, uh -huh. and me and her were good friends, and they were pumped out to there. Right. So I would go down to Tijuana every week, and every time I'd get a little $100 bill and run down there and get pumped up. And you could watch your hips, you know, expand, and your wow. ass expand, your breasts expand. And that was all liquid silicone. A liquid silicone, yeah. Which is obviously dangerous for those who don't know it. Yeah, but you know what? Some don't have any problems, you know? Some don't have any. Uh -huh. I, see, I read these girls with their, you know, giving you hip, giving you body. But, you know, I had it, and it was great. But all of a sudden, about after 10 years, it started going down my legs. And so then I started having problems, and, you know. Um, and then what do you do when that happens? Like, you wake up one morning, and you're like, what's going on? My skin texture's changing. Things are moving around, like... What, what's the what's the step and how do you not freak well, out? Well, you find a reputable surgeon and right. there's a lot of surgeons that don't even want to touch you. you uh -huh. know? There, there aren't. I found a really good one. They probably removed it out of my face 14 to 20 times, I don't know. Wow. I'm very lucky that they didn't distort the face. Yeah. Because one time I went down to Tijuana and they cut into my face, removed silicone, and he cut some nerves in this right of, the side of my face fell for like a year. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And you also had an experience with doctor they called the butcher, which, who, who, oh, which was doctor, that? Oh, Dr. Brown. Uh -huh. Good old Dr. Brown. And now, who was Dr. Brown, and how did you become involved and Dr. With Brown was a good old Mormon surgeon. Okay. <laughs> he was um, he was known for doing uh, sex changes, and, you know, lots of times, lots of the girls didn't want to go through the proper channels. You know, luckily, I had a family that sent me the proper channels, the therapy, whatever. But, you know, he was just saying, okay, come on. He was performing surgeries in garages and wow. downtown L.A. And he would do some horrendous surgeries where, you know, after he, he'd use this, the type of surgery where they, t they pull the, um, the lower intestine down into the vaginal cavity and make it, where sometimes they would urinate where you're supposed to, uh, you know. Poop. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it was horrible. A lot of people were damaged by him. But I had a problem, and I went to him, I called him overnight, and he, he met me in a station wagon down at the Marriott Hotel in San Diego, took me over the border, and he, he did help me. Wow. And then he got arrested because he fucked up somebody's hairline or something. My goodness. And then he had already had his, his license revoked years before. That's why he was doing surgeries in, yeah, the, in so, the station wagon. <laughs> so I went, I went down to San Diego courthouse and testified on his behalf. Wow. Didn't, didn't help. He got he got um, incarcerated, got a term, and guess I work for the Department of Corrections, so I followed the case. I bet you did. He followed. The, I followed the case. He got released to uh, out to state somewhere out up in Washington to his son's custody or something. He did the same thing again. If you read about him, he some old person wanted their legs there amputated for there's some sort of sexual kick out there for having your wow. your limbs removed. This person did it and got infected and they threw the he threw the leg and the guy died and he threw the body out in the desert. Wow. And then they threw they threw him and he got life term and he died a couple of years in jail. A couple of years ago. 
Oh, Nick, all the drama of it all, all I the know. adventures. Surgery. Surgery. But now, I mean, it's all sitting beautifully. Is you still having any complications oh, from yeah. all those old surgeries? Of course. I always will the rest of my life. But yeah. Right. But it's still sitting beautifully, darling, looking mm. gorgeous as ever. It's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> well, uh, I'm so happy to have you here, Monique. Well, you, you. you are truly a legend. You look gorgeous. I love your song. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much for being here. Thank You've you. served us so fiercely over the years that, darling, you snatched a trophy, honey! Yeah! 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 And you also won yourself a lap dance! Yay! Yay!